So morning or afternoon now, sorry. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for coming along. Um, so I'm Darren, founder of Quick Switch. This is Ben. So Ben is our energy consultant and does most of our energy contracts along with Chris. Um, so that's the team at Quick Switch looking after energy. So we're here to talk to you about the um, energy basket. But what we thought we'd do is give you a little bit of a, a feel for where we're at at the moment in terms of the, the current market. Why is it so high? Why is it so expensive? Over to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep this brief. I mean, obviously, we've heard a lot of news about what's going on with energy. Um, but fundamentally, you know, the reason prices are stubbornly high, you know, they're not really returned to anywhere near what they were pre-crisis, if you like. Uh, we've still obviously got a lot of problems with uh, the supply of gas. So it's really is a global gas market that's causing the issues. Um, obviously, Russia was supplying hundreds of millions of cubic metres of gas a day to Europe. It's not doing that at the moment. Um, and of course, now, unfortunately, it doesn't have a market for its gas. It can't ship it to anywhere else. And that means that a massive volume of gas is just out of the gas market. So gas is more scarce than it was. Um, longer term, obviously, infrastructure is being built to plug that gap so we can you know, get gas from, from other places. Um, but as we buy most of our gas on the international market, we're highly exposed to the higher gas prices. 40% um, of the electricity we generate in this country is done so by burning gas, obviously, in gas power stations. So that's what Ukraine is doing. Um, China, one of the largest importers, net importers of gas in the world, if not the largest. Um, as their economy, as it grows, as it contracts, as things happen in China, their gas demand rises and falls. And when that happens, because there's a, there's a the shortage of gas, gas prices spike. So um, if you've heard in the news that energy prices are going to rise this winter, it's because China's economy is growing and they're predicting that they will be purchasing a lot more gas and we, we compete with them. Uh, and of course, lack of storage. This is, it's, it's almost, it's, it's, if it wasn't serious, it'd be funny. We can't store gas in this country and yet we produce it. So in the summer when we're not burning it, we're producing it, we're selling it cheaply to Europe, to, to uh, Germany, places like that. They're happily storing it for us and they'll sell it back to us in the winter at a higher price. So um, we're not going to build, I think that we've, we've brought a new gas storage facility online recently. I don't think we're going to do any more because of course we don't want to be burning gas, we want renewables and that's where the government are going with it. So there's not really an appetite for us to increase our gas storage. So that situation is, is going to remain uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, failure of suppliers, it hasn't happened for a while, but we're still feeling the pain. So every time a supplier goes pop, they, when they do so, they owe money. They owe money for the energy that they've supplied their customers. They owe money for their customers' use of the transmission systems in this country. It can run into tens of millions of pounds. Um, whenever they go, they go bang, that money has to be paid. Those bills are paid, and the way we do that is we spread that cost amongst all of the other energy suppliers who then pass it on to their customers, you guys. So, for example, Bulb never went under, okay? Bulb had to be rescued in a, in a special way. The reason for that, Bulb owed between three and six billion. If they had actually gone under, it would have caused mayhem in the energy market, and then so many more suppliers wouldn't have been able to pay the bills uh, for Bulb's failure, and they would have failed as well, and it would have been this enormous domino effect, and, and I don't know what would have happened. Um, so yeah, failure of supply is still causing pain for all of us. Uh, legislation, taxation, so again, unfortunately, uh, taxation is a bit of an issue, so climate change levy, it's creeped up now, it's nearly a penny a unit, that's your tax that you pay uh, for your dirty energy. Uh, and also things like contracts for difference. So if the price of energy drops below a certain point, then suddenly we have to start paying uh, renewable energy producers who have agreed a right price above that for their energy. We have to just give them money, we subsidise it. Okay? So uh, sometimes dirty energy becomes cheaper than green, we have to pay a bit more. Mad. Well, not mad, but we, you know, we need to promote green. And of course, the increase in non-commodity pricing, well, Darren, you'll talk about that a bit, but of course, um, the gap now between what energy supplies purchase power for and what they put on to operate as a company has increased enormously. So for example, right now, a wholesale price of energy, if you want to buy a, a unit today on the wholesale market, it'll cost you about nine pence. And yet a supplier will supply that to you at up to 30, 35 pence a unit. Nine pence, yeah. Uh, this winter will be about 12 pence, but you're paying 30p, if you like, at the pumps, as it were. So yeah, there's a huge increase in non-commodity. We'll come on to that a, a little bit more later on. So what can we expect? Just quickly, because we want to get onto the, th onto the, the main bit about the basket. So current wholesale price is lower than it was in February 22, which was when the big pressure came. Um, so February 22 is when we saw prices trebling, yeah? Current wholesale price is lower than that, but we're still seeing the price not coming down as quickly. Typical British economy. When it goes up, it goes up really quickly. When it comes down, it takes really low, low slow days to come down. So the retail price is still up about 200%. So we're currently seeing unit prices of about 30 pence on the open market. Um, whereas pre-21, 
you were probably looking at 15 to 17 pence, yeah? So about 200% up. As we said, high non-commodity costs, 60% of the bill now made up of non-commodity costs. So that's transmission charges, that's um, extra um, money that the, the suppliers are taking on to reinvest back into the grid, to you know, make us green and make us more renewable. We're footing that bill as, as consumers. Yeah. Um, and then suppliers baking in higher risk rates. So they, they're putting in, um, so it's just like your credit card balance here. Yeah? Um, you pay an interest rate on your credit score. Based on your credit score, the lower your credit score, the higher your interest rate. Exactly the same in the gas and energy market. If they think your business is a high risk, then you have to pay more. It's almost like a self-defeating prophecy, yeah? Because they're thinking you can't afford your electricity and gas bills, so we'll make it even less affordable. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's the way the market's set. So there's obviously, um, just quickly, Ben, talk about the EB. Oh, so yeah, so we had a support package in for this winter, the EBRS, uh, which helped out a lot of people in a bit of a sticky situation. That came to an end in March, and it was replaced with the EBDS. So essentially, it's just a watered-down version of what went before. Unfortunately, um, it's not going to be helpful for any business that's agreed a contract probably from December uh, right through into this year. Uh, and it's only of minimal help now to businesses that agreed their contracts from December 21 up, up to you know December last year. Uh, I think now your um, wholesale element needed to be over 30 pence of your unit price for any of that help to actually help you know kick in if you like so most people that, that, that isn't going to be any use to them and depending on the length of the contract you agreed uh, we have a no news that any more packages will be announced post March the end of March next year so if you agreed a three-year contract on a very high price you might well be high and dry next year so not what we wanted to hear from the government but unfortunately that, that's what what they gave us um, so obviously, yeah, I've kind of talked about the commodity element now a little bit. So um, just talk a bit really quickly about prices. Um, so yeah, from December up until June, we saw the price, the wholesale price fall and supplies, as you've mentioned, Darren, very slowly, they, you know, they reduced their tariffs down to about the 30 pence mark, which is what we're seeing now. And we do expect prices to rise again this winter. And when I look at the forward contracts, as I've you know, mentioned, I can already see that they're, they're starting to tick up a little bit. Um, and obviously that information comes from Cornwall Insight. I don't know if you've heard of those guys, but they're very well respected analysts. So I get a report from them every single day. Um, and, and they are, you know, that's, that's what they think will happen. And I, I can kind of see it already. Um, interestingly though, just, just because the energy market is an unpredictable beast, in June, against all of our you know, expectations, energy prices rose quite a lot. Um, the wholesale price it probably jumped up about 30-40% just in June and that was because there was less wind power than we thought, um, it was hotter than we thought so there was demand through uh, refrigeration and air conditioning um, and we had a, an unplanned outage in Norway which has continued on into this month, I mean if the Norwegians ever sort it out and give us a bit of gas we might see prices drop again and, and the French, uh, they've, they've kept a couple of reactors off and all these little things can just come together all of a sudden you get a bit of a mini storm um, so it just goes to show that you know the energy market is still quite an unstable place so, so. yeah gas electric track so there's a, there's a pretty pretty solid um, spark gap between the gas price and electricity price and they, they're quite they're quite connected yeah, so it's, yeah, the, you're paying five, six pence for gas and 30 pence for thingy, but they'll track almost sort of commensurately with each other. So the reason for giving you all that information is to sort of say energy is a tough market. People just think it's getting onto Google, getting onto, you know, meerkat.com or whatever it's called and, and finding the best price. What we try and what we try to do with the basket is, is take out all that risk. Um, so when we start talking about procurement strategies, this is where we start talking about things like the federal approach. So 100%, if you're not using us, you need to use a broker. Um, most people, uh, there's some uh, market analysis out there that most people will go to the big six electricity and gas companies, tap in all their details. It's a bit of a ball ache because you've got to put in all your details, your address, your usage, all that kind of stuff. Generate a quote with EDF. Then you go on to Eon, do the same thing. And the, the market analysts say that people only do that three times and they'll only use EDF, British Gas, Eon, Empower, those guys. And as me and Ben will tell you, they aren't necessarily the cheapest in the market. They might be the most well known, but they're definitely not the cheapest in the market. So definitely use a broker. Um, something to think about, renewable energy, because of the higher pricing, actually renewable energy and buying 100% renewable input energy into your, into your business actually is looking quite attractive. Whereas Previously, it might have been maybe two, three pence dearer uh, per kilowatt hour. It's probably only about one pence, even less than that sometimes. 
And that means you can then start shouting about your green credentials and your pathway to net zero, because all your input electricity would be net zero. Definitely, if you aren't using us, look to fix, fix your prices short term, all short term contracts at the moment, because of this bounce in the market and, and trying to sort of tune out all those differences. You want to try and keep it as level as possible. So short term fixed price contracts, we say is the best way. And adopting a federal approach, which is pooling the buying power. So a lot of people talk about the larger organizations doing wholesale and hedging. And, you know, it sounds like weird and wonderful stuff that um, we always talk about the vanity rate, don't we? So, you know, you might talk to a CEO of a, of a public leisure trust and they'll tell you, yes, we're paying 12 pence a kilowatt hour for our electricity because that's what they see on their report. And that's because they've hedged and they're wholesale bought through a broker. What they don't tell you is all the other prices that then go on to top of that, yeah? So they might be paying 12 pence for the actual commodity, but then there's the transmission costs, then there's the broker commission, there's all the, all the other bits and bobs. And when we've looked at it, when you actually do a hedge compared to an off contract price, we're actually cheaper. We might not have that vanity rate that you can all shout about when you come to conferences and say, oh, we're doing a great job procuring our energy, but you're actually bottom line, cost of ownership per unit is better with, with the, the system that we're proposing. And that's what we've done. So Rob was really forward thinking uh, when all the energy prices were starting to bite you guys as owners and operators. He approached us and said, what can we do? And we said, well, look, we've got this ready to go. We can, we can go out to the members. Um, and I don't know how many of you saw the, the survey. Did any of you see the survey at all? I saw a price comparison of what you were able to do. It was yeah. nearly a third. Yeah, yeah. Price. But you didn't see the original survey, you know? So we did a survey, there was about 200 respondents to that. And basically all it was, was tell us how much energy you're using in gas and electricity. Tell us when your contract end date is and tell us if you intend to join the scheme, if we can get a good price together. And we had 200 respondents. Off that, that gave us about 16 gigs worth of usage. So you guys, we work it in kilowatt hours because it's like a thousand. A gig is a million, a million kilowatt hours. So we've got 16 gigs. We went out to market on your behalf and we said to all the suppliers, we've got this. They're all independent gym owners. They're all similar profiles. Most of them, are, some of them are 24 seven. Some of them are just, you know, normal working hours. How much do you want that basket? And we went out to all the, all the various suppliers that we work with, started trading them off against each other. That was quite fun, having a bit of horseplay with them. So, you know, we go to one supplier and say, what can you do here? They go, well, we can go 3p under the curve. And then we'll go somewhere else and they say, they're offering three, what can you do? Well, we'll do three and a half pence under the curve. And eventually we fell with you, U Energy. So U Energy is a lovely uh, company based in the UK, Nottingham headquartered, um, English call centres, giving us a onboarding team uh, specifically for our customers and we're seeing prices anywhere between five and seven pence below the market curve so i can't use this but i'll try so the um uh, so if you look at that's the top of the blue line is where the market is at the moment and the bottom of the blue line where the orange starts is where our basket prices are falling in at the moment so this gap here at the moment like i said five to seven pence on electricity i'm just talking about here five, seven pence or 30% sort of rough saving, 20% uh, rough saving. When we come up, what we're doing is we're taking all the people that have come out of contract over the last couple of months and the future coming months, and we're gonna put them onto a contract that will end on September 24. And by the summer of 24, we'll go back out to the market and say, look, we have all these guys committed to this scheme. This is how much they're using. And then we just leverage all your buying power. So rather than, David Lloyd, who used millions and millions of kilowatt hours, being able to just buy the best price, the cheapest price, because of their usage, because of their buying power. We're leveraging that for you guys. So ultimately, small PT class working out of a church hall or something similar to that will pay exactly the same price as today, Fitness Works, one of the biggest you know, independent chains. And that's an amazing story, first up. But second up, it means you're helping each other as well. So the more of you that you know, participate, the cheaper we get it, the easier it becomes for you, the more people will join it and, and it's then